wonderful class. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me. I zoomed in close because there's lots of little tiny little details in these two cards. Uh, what made me decide to come up with these designs is both uh, general pencils, watercolor pencils, the Kimberly watercolor pencils, and their multi-pastel pastel pencils are so easy to work with. Um, cost effective, travel easy, and artists of all ages and abilities can work with them. So um, for starters, I tried to give you two different backgrounds. Uh, this background right here is a Boku effect. And I'm gonna get started with that right now. Because this is gonna be filmed, if you don't have these particular items, it is, we're just gonna do a soft background instead. But I wanted to be able to show you that was one of your many options and I'm gonna show you a few other ones too. We're gonna to do the background first because this has to dry. And then all these little circles we're gonna be creating right now. And then once it's dry, we're gonna rouge a soft pastel background in the back. So um, for that, you're gonna need a stencil brush. I love the Dynasty Stencil Pro. This is a half inch and you can use um, any glazing medium, a modeling paste. For this particular one, I use the DecoArt Media Liquid Glass uh, because I just really think it gives a cool effect. I put a little bit out on my wax paper palette. If you don't have that, you can use regular wax paper. You just wanna dip it in and get a little bit on it, rouge it in. You don't need a lot. If you use a lot, um, it will be more dimensional, but it also takes a lot longer to dry. So basically I've got just a little bit on my brush. I swirl it around, it's as easy as that. And for the design, I did a few and then I picked it up and I moved it to a different area. I think you can actually see them showing up. Can you see them? When they dry, they're crystal clear. Um, I normally clean with my master's brush cleaner. I'm just going to rinse the excess off out of it and dump it in here and get this cleaned up right off the bat. Otherwise, it'll dry in it. Okay. Water activates this cleaner. It will not only take any kind of medium out, it will take oils, acrylics, uh, watercolor, any medium that you are working with. And it's as easy as this, just get a nice lather, make sure you've covered all the hairs that you had the medium on, and then you're gonna just rinse it out, okay? Close this little guy up. While that is drying, we're gonna jump in right away and start our watercolor ornaments. Now, you can make them any size you want at all. I could have used a compass. I could have used a template. I just grabbed different size. Oops, I got some of my shavings. I just grabbed three slightly different size round circles. And I traced them with a 2H pencil. Actually, the general pencil Kimberly 2H. Uh, what I like about a 2H over just a regular HB pencil is it's a harder degree, so it leaves a lighter line. And watercolor is a semi-transparent medium. So sometimes your lines will show through. They really don't with this. And also it doesn't smear at all. So when the watercolor comes into contact with it, um, it doesn't muddy the colors at all. So it's as simple as this, three different circles, okay? Now, you can work with your watercolor pencils two different ways. You can work with them dry or you can work with them wet. If you draw and wet, the color is going to be, well, that'll be a lighter value. If I want it darker, I do not press harder, I layer more. Because watercolor paper has cotton fibers in it. And if you push too hard, you put a dent in the paper and it'll leave a mark. And actually, once the water hits the paper, the water goes to the low spot. So it won't keep that color all the way across the paper. It's gonna go to that little valley. 
all the lines dissolve, look at the difference values, the exact same pencil. So how light or dark? Now, if you draw on dry paper, it's gonna be stationary. If you draw on wet paper, it's gonna look like you loaded a liner brush and you have stroke colorant. So that is really good when you want stationary color. For the ornaments, where all the colors just sort of float into each other, then you have to do a wet palette technique, which means you're pre-wetting the paper. You don't have to go out and buy watercolors, all I do. I'm working on 140 cold press arch paper for my ornaments, but you can see this paper is a lot flimsier. This is 90 pound watercolor paper. And that's what I use to make a paper palette. To me, there was no difference between squeezing it out of a tube or just drawing pigment on the paper. Now you'll notice I had already activated that. Once it dries, I can just come in and reload it up again and use this paper over and over and over again. When I'm gonna be working wet on wet, I do not draw a light amount in. I really wanna lay a lot of pigment down because I'm in control of how light or dark it is by how much water I put in. If I only put a light amount in, I'm only gonna get a light color, okay? So the first thing you're gonna do is wet one of your ornaments. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm gonna start with my, with my blue, blue one, I think. So I'm gonna have a light blue and a dark blue, and I'm just going to pre-wet the entire ornament. And it doesn't matter if you go outside the lines because we're gonna be cutting these out. I wanted them to lay dimensional on the paper. So I pre-wet it. Now I'm gonna activate, you always activate the lighter of the two colors first. So I'm gonna activate, see it's just like I've got watercolor and I'm just gonna drop some of this color in. Now I'm not even gonna rinse my brush. I'm gonna go right into the darker color and I'm gonna put it in a few other spots. And I want it a little darker so in a few spots. Now, I'm just gonna leave that. You would think, oh, but that looks all blotchy. That's the beauty of watercolor. The color is gonna merge all those colors together. So when it dries, it looks like that, okay? So that's as simple that is. That's my first one. That's my blue one, rinse my brush. The next one I'm gonna do is my red one. Now for the blue, I use the light blue and the blue. For the red, I'm gonna use red first and then carmine, which is a little more alizarin. So now I'm going to wet this one. And I'll go a little outside the circle. Activate my red. <clears throat> pop it in. Now watercolor and watercolor pencils dry a little bit lighter. So if you love the color when it's wet, you should pop a little more in while it's still wet because it is going to lighten. Now I'm going into the carmine, slightly different, a little rosier, and pop that here, there, and everywhere. And luckily, I left a little bit of a dry area, which I love. That's gonna be my little sparkle area. Now I'm gonna rinse my brush out. And the third one is going to be heliotrope and purple. Pretty wet. Now, you don't want a puddle sitting on your paper, okay? You just want a nice little shine. So if you got carried away and you had too much water in your brush, just let it sit for a second and start to dry up a little bit, okay? I'm gonna activate my heliotrope. What I love about these watercolor pencils, besides the fact that they are uh, semi-transparent, is they're artist grade. You're only as good as the product you're working with, guys. If you use a student brand watercolor, you're, it does not have near the pigment. You're never going to be able to get these beautiful contrasting colors. Okay. Kathy, can you take just one minute to introduce the brush again? We got a few questions about the brush. 
Ah, this is by Silver Brush. This is um, a black velvet, a number eight round. Why I, it's not the only good watercolor brush out there, guys. What I love about it is it's got a full belly and a tapered tip. And so I can, let me really get some water in here and show you what I mean. I can make a line this skinny all the way to this fat. So I never have to stop and keep picking up different brushes. That's what I love about it. Um, a lot of watercolor brushes out there do not have the taper tip. They're round all the way around. Um, a very, very cost effective one is by Dynasty. It's called a water lily. It's not as tapered of a tip, but it still has a tapered tip, which is really nice. To go over the paper again, this is Arsh 140 cold press. You can use any 140 cold press paper. Arsh, you know, we all have our favorites. And again, you can see this is pretty, this is pretty stiff for the heavier weight. And this one, the 90 pound, you can see is real, real flexible. Okay. So those are our first three ornaments. Now for this one, we're going to change it up a little bit. They're smaller. It's another blue one. <clears throat> so I'm going to repeat the same process. Try to leave a little dry space for a little twinkle. Otherwise, I'll show you how we can bring it back in. I'm going to activate my light blue again first. Drop it in in several spots. Then I'm going to come in with some of the darker blue. Oh, I got that a little darker than I want. So just need a little more water in it. See how I lighten that up? I do that on purpose sometimes to show you. Okay. Voila. The next one is going to be heliotrope. I really like the heliotrope in the purple. So I did that one a second time. Remember, we don't want it sloppy wet. We just want it a nice little bit of moisture level all the way around so those colors can ebb and flow. See how they're all starting to just roll into each other? So I'm going to do the heliotrope again. Drop it in the majority of it. Bring a little purple in around it. And you know what? You let the water do the work. The more you sit there and try to push the colors together, they just end up muddying into each other. So you're better to drop it in and just watch it for a second. See where the water's going to take it. Okay. And then the last one, this little guy is light green and green. We have the heat on where I am now. So I'm really having to watch my paper because it's drying much faster than say someone in Florida. Well, they could probably lay one color down, <clears throat> go answer the phone and come back and it would still be damp. So you have to know your environment too, okay? Notice I'm not, it's not rocket science. I'm just kind of dropping in and seeing what it wants to do. It's going to look totally different when it's dry. Now, we're going to do the beginning of the little silver tops on them. Super, super easy. Try to leave, a. now this time I'm not going to pre-wet the paper to show you the difference. It's going to be a little more stationary. So you're going to be in control of where it goes. Okay. So. <clears throat> this is the top, this is the bottom. We're going to want under here a little darker and up here a little lighter. So I'm going to try not to get it right where those two lines meet. <clears throat> I'm going to draw and wet one for you and I'm going to show you the palette technique in another. So I just scratch some of my gray on my palette and I turned around and see 
When it's stationary, it all, it stays exactly where you put it. So you're in a little more control. And by not filling the whole thing in, it's going to look much more interesting when all is said and done. Now, as I run out of pigment, that's kind of cool too, because it almost is going to make little lines for me. Doesn't that just have a little more texture? Notice it's a little darker where I first laid it down. And as I continued to lay it down, it got lighter because there was less pigment there. Now it really ends about here. You'll notice they're, they're little tiny guys, but I made them super long because when we cut them out, all that excess is what goes behind it. And that's how we attach them. Okay. So that one, I did the palette technique. Now this time I'm going to draw and what? And you're going to notice it's going to be a little darker because there is more pigment being applied everywhere. Notice I left a lot of the white of the paper because that's how I'm going to try to get this effect. Where it's white, that gray is going to go in there, but it's going to look a little lighter because some of the white is showing through. And less is more. You know, put a little in when in doubt, when it dries. If you wish to put a little more in, it's not a problem because the beauty of these watercolor pencils is once it dries, it's permanent. When you put a second layer on, it's not going to reactivate. Okay. So I'm wetting this now with my brush. Don't have a super lot of water in the brush. Okay. So you can wait till it dries to put more on, but if while it's still wet, if you wish you had a little more, look what you can do. While it's still wet, activate some of that color and you can even just add more right now. Drawing and wetting, if you don't dissolve all the lines, it actually gives you a little bit of texture too, which is really cool for some effects, okay? And then for the third one, I'm gonna do the palette technique again. On that one, I had it lighter towards the bottom. And again, doesn't matter if you go outside your lines. I'm trying not to totally get the very edge because I want it a little lighter. Let me fold this up so you can kind of see. See how I've got it lighter here and a little bit on the edge? I got it lighter a little bit on the edge right there. That's a secret to making things look more dimensional, have at least three values of a color, okay? Leave a little bit right there too, because we have a darker color that's going to be going on for the next stage. Can you see the little bit of darker in a few of these? That's the second stage. So boom. Now for these ornaments, I did the little kind of like crown one. And again, notice white, light, medium, dark in all of them, okay? And what I basically did was, where's my pencil? Here we go. I basically drew a circle or an oval. And that kind of went down like this. And I went one, two, three, four. Super easy, okay? And for that one, I'll go ahead and load up some more gray again. Get that one in front of me. So try to keep that top a little lighter again. Don't go all the way down. Now, you can leave it like that, but if that's too stark for you, I rinse my brush. I took the majority of the water out. It's barely damp. And I can just touch the edge of those. See how see how that softened out to nothing? Just wet the white around it. Come up to that edge. And that's just going to go right down into it. Okay? And again, if you don't have enough, now is the time. Bring a little more in in a few spots. I find working with their the Kimberly watercolor pencils, just so relaxing. All right, so that is step one. While these are drying, we are going to start our backgrounds. So I'm gonna let you look one more time 
at the little metal toppers, okay? The black velvet brushes are really as good as they say. Yes, they are a bit expensive. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, you can go to www.thebrushguys.com and they are 40 to 50% off, like maybe $12. $12. But start with Michael's because they have good coupons too. <laughs> Does Michael's carry them? Yes, yes. Oh, then... Definitely Michaels. Definitely mm -hmm. Michaels. I didn't realize Michaels carried them. Yes. We got to keep Michaels. We we got to give Thanks them our business. Felicia. <laughs> let's, uh, let's give them our business so they can continue to offer these wonderful classes for all of us. So did you guys all get a couple of values in each one of these? Did you get both colors showing up in your ornaments? That's the hardest part. It gets so much easier. And I don't even think this is harder. It's being sarcastic. All right. So those are drying. And now we're going to start our backgrounds with our pastel pencils. Now, I just, I used 80-pound drawing paper. You can, you can go as low as 70-pound drawing paper. And drawing paper, just like watercolor paper, has two sides to it a smooth side, and one that's a little more textured. The front side of the pad has more texture, or what we call in drawing tooth. It allows more pigment to be laid down. But many times when I want a real soft look, I do not use the textured side of the paper. Okay, so for our first one, we're just going to do this background, okay? This soft background. It started out just looking like this, okay? Now, when I draw with my pastel pencils, um, I again, it's sort of like watercolor. I get beautiful, just beautiful, rich pigment, okay? See all those little dusting particles? That's what allows you to move it all across the paper. If you draw, the color is going to be darker. When I want it soft like this, then I grate the pigment off the top. And I, you can use an emery board, or I like to just use a sanding paddle. And all that really is is sandpaper. That's They put little sheets on a little paddle so it's easy to hang on to. So I'm going to do two swatches of it. If I blend with my finger, the color is going to be very bold. If I lightly blend with my finger, it's going to be a lighter value. If I blend with a cotton ball, it's going to be even a lighter value. Can you see that? Because two things, the softer the blending tool um, the lighter and softer the value is going to be because less pressure is being applied to the paper, but also it's absorbing part of the color. So I started out using my finger and then I ended using the cotton ball. Okay, so I'll show you this one right here. So for this one, I use the light green, the emerald green, the sea green, emerald green, sea green. Did one of my pencils roll away? Humor me, guys. Sorry. <clears throat> okay. I use these two. Again, we always start with the lighter color. So I'm going to just grate some pigment in random spots. For starters, about this much. <clears throat> going to take my finger and start blending them.
You also could use a makeup sponge. You could use Q-tips. So there's my first color. Then I'm gonna take my sea green. I love sea green. Got a little bit of a blue hue to it. <clears throat> Again, less is more. Let's position some and kind of see if we like what's happening. Now, right now, it just looks like a bunch of circles. Once I initially get it in, I'm going to move it around more, okay? And I'll start moving them into each other. See, because you have all those little dusting particles, you are you have that capability of just continuing to move it all across the surface. Okay, then we're going to see where we want a little more of the darker, I would say here. And I'm going to put the lighter here. And there. There is going to be such a small amount of that pigment still sitting on top of the surface that you really don't have to worry about sealing this with like a spray fixative or something. <clears throat> if you ended up having a lot, what I like to do instead is I take a piece of tissue paper, you know, like gift bag tissue paper and lay it over my work. And then I just take a metal teaspoon and I just start rubbing that teaspoon over the tissue paper. And it sets the pigment into the paper and what the pigment, what the paper can't absorb, the tissue does. And then nothing comes up at all. You don't have to worry about a smear. So I have it about like this now. Now I'm gonna take my cotton ball and rouge it just a little bit more and set it in. And there is that nice soft background to make the edges darker because you really only see this much when we cut this out. You're only going to see a tiny bit. And you're going to notice some spots, there's hardly none. See how it's very little here and more here? You never want the same amount of pigment all the way across. It's so much more interesting when it ebbs and flows. Let me show you on the finished one. See, you got it up high here, only a little here, none there. It just actually adds more dimension to your work, okay? So less is more. Now you're going to pick up the indigo, or you could take the sea green again, but I want to give a little more contrast in mind to show you. You place it outside the line. <clears throat> See where that line is? Start blending it and pulling it in, okay? Out like that and then I'm in control to kind of move it around okay and I'm going to hit and miss that here and there in a few spots not everywhere again remember less is more you can always come back and put a little more or I noticed that some some of my green was still on here I hadn't tapped it off so this one's actually going to have a little bit of blue coming into it and a little bit of green. There's no right or wrong. You are the boss of your art. Whatever calls to you, that's what you do. Get that where you can see it. Yeah, it just gives it a little more depth. Spin your work. Maybe a little there. Maybe a little there. Then bring it up into it. Okay. Again, don't be afraid to 
soften it up if you got a little carried away. A little more on the bottom. Okay. Voila. There's your first background. Now, I wanted to make it seem like maybe twinkle lights in the background, uh, more ornaments maybe way back there, a little uh, mistletoe or greenery. So this is so fun and easy to do. Take a kneaded eraser. There's three sizes. I use the 139E general kneaded eraser. It's the middle size, but you could take the small or the large. If you have the large, all you do is just pull a chunk off. And kneaded erasers are self-cleaning. So if yours is real dirty, you just pull it out and pull the dirt into itself and you get it nice and clean. You want a funky shape. You want maybe something like this, a real funky shape. And you basically lay it down and then just roll it. Isn't that cool? Somebody say, that's cool. I love when people look at something you've done and they're like, how did you get that effect? <laughs> They'd never think we just did this, would they? And there's your background. Thank you. I got two. That's cool. Love it. So that is your first background. Okay. And then I like to, now see, look at it, it's all dirty. So I'm going to turn around and just feed it right back into itself. The reason I like to roll it instead of stamp with it is when you stamp with it, you tend to get the same shape repeated over and over and over. Sometimes that's really cool, but that didn't give me the look of diffuse things in the background. Another, you know, what I love about a lot of generals erasers is they not only effortlessly erase, but they'll pick up partial pigment. So sometimes I choose to maybe do a soft background like that or something behind something. Just to me, your backgrounds don't have to be boring. They just have to stay in the background. So that is another really cool uh, thing I like to do for some backgrounds. But I also love General's BM2 pen style erasers because let's say I didn't want to necessarily make the outer edges darker. I mean, I really could have just created something like this. Look how it effortlessly just will create any kind of designs as borders if you wanted. The gum eraser even gives a really, really cool kind of a look too. See, it lifts more than the ES20. Or going this way, I could even make it do less, but it has a little bit of a texture pattern to it. So I love picking up every one of my erasers and saying, what can I do with it? What I love about the Black 18 is you're going to notice that I mounted it on, um, I used Canson color line paper, but you really can use any kind of um, colored specialty paper, construction paper, anything you want, because it's just the mounting of the background. But let's say I had marks on it and I wanted to erase them. If you use a white eraser, sometimes on toned or colored papers, it leaves um, a little bit of a white ghost mark or it can lift some of the color. And that does not happen with the black eraser. It will effort effortlessly lift on toned paper and not um, leave a white mark, but you can erase on white paper and it doesn't leave a dark mark. So. There's a reason why there's several different types of erasers. I usually utilize several in anything I'm doing because they lift different amounts. So I get several more 
hues of light as well as color in my design. Okay. Now, the Boku, hopefully it's dried of yours, and that's what it looks like. It acts as a resist in the background. And I thought that would almost act like, oh, in the background, there's a lot more ornaments or something. I actually could have done different shapes too, not just all the exact same shape. Uh, but that was the stencil I had at the time. Now, notice how smooth this looks and delicate. I did this on the smooth side of the paper. This one that is a mine that's dried, I did it on the rough side. So you're going to see that it's going to look a little more textured when I get the colors on it. And those, you're going to go with your light blue and your emerald green for starters for your background, okay? Now, I have worn the tip down on this. So I'm going to turn around and sharpen it. Uh, pastels and charcoal both are very, very soft uh, pigment cores. So you really want to have a good sharpener. This General's All Art Sharpen, the little red, is so cost effective. I've probably had this one a year. Um, two things make a good sharpener. You want a stainless steel German blade in it, but the angle's important. And General gets their, has their blades angled to give you the exact point you get coming out, out, out of the uh, packaging. You can see it effortlessly, totally gives me an even all the way around exposed core. evenly all the way around exposed core. This is that same little guy just in the canister. Okay. And then we have our three in one, the, the Cadillac of sharpeners. So this one has three different size diameter holes because sometimes uh, we have a few pencils in our line that are real chunky, but the most important thing is you can keep black and white separate from color. Okay. All right, I'm gonna do some more grating again. I'm going to grab a different one because these have those colors and they're on the very last sheet. Otherwise I would just pull the sheet off. Again, remember we go light to dark. So I'm gonna start with some of the light blue. I could have drawn this on, but the colors again would have been much, much darker. And I didn't want that for this particular background. I've done entire pieces of art just with the pencils, applying the pigment off of the pencil core. They're abs the pigment is just absolutely gorgeous. All right, so I'm going to start rouging some of my light blue here. I love the fact that I'm cutting them out so I can go outside the lines with all this. Okay. And then I have some of the light green, the emerald green. And you don't have to use my colors. These were just the colors that I used. I utilized this light green because I went with um, the green paper for mounting. But you could have turned around and picked any other color. You didn't have to go with my colors. That might fill it in. And again, I used the Deco Art liquid glass, but you could also use any type of glazing medium. You can even use um, modeling paste, but you don't want the heavy body modeling paste. You would want the light. And hopefully my screen is going to show the texture. Okay. A little more textural. Can you see all those little texture marks in there? Yes, no, maybe so. And last but not least, because it's a bolder color, light blue, emerald green. Um, I'm gonna put a little blue in. I only have four, why do you, here we go. And again, need to sharpen it again. Mm -hmm. 
All right, a little bit of blue. I always go light to dark and less is more, okay? Now you're seeing the texture more because this is a darker color. Before I finish blending them, I'm gonna lift it up so you can see. See how it shows the texture more? So that's why I chose to do the smoother side for these. But I like to show you all your options, okay? Voila. All right, so that's the textural and this is the softer side, okay? So these are, your backgrounds are totally done, guys. By now your ornaments should be dry. <clears throat> this is what is so cool. At the very end, we're gonna do the final embellishments. That was just the pencil drawn on what paper? <clears throat> But we're not going to do that yet. We're going to wait to the very last step. After it's dry, all you are going to do, here, I'll do it on this one. All you're going to do once we get our back, the next step, this, after we do step two and we're up to step three, all you would do is pre-wet it because remember, it doesn't reactivate. <clears throat> so I always wait till the very end if I'm going to do something like this. Because as I'm developing it, I might change my mind. All right. How did you apply the media glass on the paper? Remember, I did it with a stencil brush. I did it with the stencil brush. All right. So this is wet. And then see when it's wet, it looks like I loaded a liner brush. Well, that's going to be as simple as that. That'll be your third step. And it's always nice to have some of them look like they're, you barely see part of it coming off of, because it's going around the back side of the ornament. So that's how we did that one. This one on the final step, I just, you know, the little, all you could do pearls, you could do little diamonds, all the little um, accents now that you can have, uh, that you can apply to anything because the back side of them already has adhesive on it. And then for these lines, what I used was the General's Charcoal White Pencil. You guys all probably wondered why I had a charcoal white pencil on your list. But I like to use this guy all the time. And what you do is we're pre pretending we're starting at the top. And then we're just following the shape of the ornament. That's all I used was that for this. Now, I kept a lot of these highlights. But if you hadn't kept the highlight, a fun trick. And I always put a flag on it. This one I know is that I wet all the time. I actually have two. One I keep dry and one I wet. I flag it because until it totally dries again, it's always just going to make this bright mark. And once you wet it and apply it somewhere, it is going to be permanent. Look what it does when you wet it. It becomes this opaque white liquid. And that's how I can bring the white of the paper back. Okay? So, and then the other ones, I didn't. Okay, why am I, how did my camera disconnect? Okay, I don't understand how we lost me. We definitely can still hear you. There you uh, go. All right. I laid my card accidentally on the thing, <laughs> on my screen button. So for these, I just left as is because I was trying to show you guys so many different options, okay? So now, why I thought this was so 
cool of a technique to share with you is to see these kind of look flat. See how these have so much more volume? I'm going to show you how to easily apply this dark, dark, beautiful um, edge around your ornaments. This time we are going to draw and wet, okay? I'm gonna take my carmine pencil for the red one, and I'm gonna draw all around the outside of my ornament. And remember when I said you draw and wet, the colors are bolder because there's a lot more pigment on and not as much water, okay? So now I'm gonna wet the inside again, but not all the way, okay? And then I'm gonna start bringing this. See when the water hits it, as I'm activating and I'm bringing it into the ornament. Now, I'm not rinsing my brush. I'm just taking the excess out. And then if I feel like I need to tickle it a little bit in a few spots, see how I'm just grabbing the edge? Just grab the very edge of it. And I'm gonna let just the water do the rest, okay? Now, can you see how I got that darker edge just around it? Yes, no, maybe so. I'm hoping it's gonna pick it up for you guys. For the blue one, I would do the same thing. Now, for the red one, I put it all the way around. See the blue one, I've got it going up higher here, not so much there. I kind of made it irregular. So I want you to try that too, okay? So what I'll do is I'll draw more in some areas and less in others. I exaggerated on the red. You really don't need that much. And you see how they dried how all those colors just merged into each other? Is it showing up for you? Are you guys enjoying this, I hope? Kathy, based on the uh, responses I've seen thus far, they are truly enjoying um, everything you've done so far. Um, awesome. And just as a quick reminder, while I have the mic open, I did put a note for anyone who are needing the links that have been provided. You are able to save the chat um, before the end of class so that you can get all the links um, that were already provided in the chat because they are not saved with the recording. So definitely click um, on the three dots in the chat and click on save chat and that will save uh, the information for you so that you can go back and view those links at a later date. For this one, I did the purple all the way around the edge, not the heliotrope. I thought these were are you using the watercolor for the edge? Yes. Oh, yes. The ornaments are totally done in the watercolor. The backgrounds were done in the pastels. All right. So again, activate, bring in, activate, bring in, activate. Let the water take it wherever it wants to, okay? If you think it's going to be darker than you want, take the extra off. I'm going to spin it around. See, watch. I just want to tickle the very outer edge to bring it in a little more, okay? 
and that's going to give you your darker edge. And when all is said and done, when it dries, if it's not as dark as you want, you can do it all over again, guys. You can do it all over again. Whatever the darker color was in each one of them, that is the color you're going to use. So this would be purple. This would be purple. This would be the darker green. And this one would be the blue again. Okay. Since we only have a few more minutes left, I want to, I'm not going to do the bottom three. I'm going to do your second stage of your ornament toppers. Now you could either take the black watercolor pencil or I love using the sketch and wash because it's water soluble graphite and it reacts and acts just like the watercolor pencils you draw. And when you activate it, all those lines dissolve. Now I can make it super dark to super light depending how much pigment I use. So less is more on the crown one and I'm not putting it all the way around. I'm doing a start stop, okay? Maybe a little bit back here and maybe a little bit here, here, here and there for starters. So I'm, I'm gonna let you look at this for a second for those of you that are doing it. You ever take the black or the sketch and wash and just that little bit, or use your camera and take a little screenshot or better yet, rewatch it. Now, when I draw in wet, if I want the color stationary, I just, I just wet it. But if I want it to soften out like this to nothing, Here's a really cool trick. Wet further down. I'm starting down here. And then when I wet this, the water travels it down. Okay. Rinse. Do the same thing here. I'm going to start further down. And then when I activate it, it's going to go further down into it. Okay. Same thing with down here. And then they'll come up into it. It was as simple as that to get all those little values. Okay. If it's hey, darker Kathy, than you want, run a little more water on it. Yes. There was a quick question asking. Um, I wanted to catch you before we got to the end of the class. Wanted to know what brand of stencil brush would you recommend? Um, I can only recommend the one I use. I'm not, I tried this one and I fell in love with it. So I use it all the time. Dynasty brush makes it. It's a stencil pro and I got the half inch. They have larger ones, smaller ones. Um, I always go with the medium one. Less is more. It'll do the majority of my, uh, surface areas. Mm. Is that helpful? I think so. All right. Now we're going to go to these little guys again, too. Little on the top, little on the bottom, little up here, and a little down here and down this side. You don't want to take it everywhere. On this one, a little up here, a little here, and again, down this side. And for the round one, I did the opposite. Remember, this really ends about here. So mm -hmm. I put a little up there, I put some down here. Again, not all the way, but I put it on this side this time. And notice it's not all the same length or width. You really want them different lengths or widths. If it's the exact same length and width, it tends to flatten it. It's a lot of silly little tips like that that, Turn around and make your work so much more dimensional. Mm -hmm. So wet lower, come up into it. Okay. Wet around it. And then come up into it. And the water will push it out further for you. See how it just went a little bit everywhere? The pigment goes wherever it finds moisture. So... 
Watch, I'll put it there and watch how the water is just going to pull that out. You never want to do what I just did, which was two areas at the same time, because this is going to find this moisture and all run together. So you really need to do one side, let it dry, and then the other side. Up here doesn't matter because it's only in one spot. It's not going to meet up with this because we had that white area. Okay. Same with this one here. Put a little there. Went around it. And then come up into it. And that water is going to pull it. And as it pulls out, you're going to get more than one value in it. Okay. And then when they're all dry, you cut them out and you start mounting, okay? Uh, for mounting, you can, these I did dimensional, these I just did flat. And you can do double stick tape, you can Elmer's glue, you can uh, glue dots. For these, I just use the dimensional double stick tabs because I really wanted them sitting up higher, okay? Now, Whatever shape you make your paper, you're just going to want to make your green mounting paper slightly larger. I don't know where I put my extra mounting paper, um, but it is this exact size. Okay, now these, you could turn around and make your own cards. You can buy pre-made card stock this size. Just to show you how easy it is, I turned around and just, just made a card, okay? This is typing paper. You don't have to use expensive paper. This is your card stock. The dimensions that we had. See, here's a darker one to show you. Nine and a half long seven inches wide okay that's what i cut off and then you would just fold it in half this put the white paper in two and then i just took some of this stringy elastic stuff and then i would turn around and mount this right on top of it then and then you've got your card made you also though could make them slightly larger sizes and have a double mount or a triple mount. Um, sky's the limit. We worked with just the watercolor pencils in the pastels and the sketch and wash and the charcoal white pencil. We did our embellishments with the watercolor pencils and the charcoal white. But guys, you can also there's glitter, there's glue pens, there's um, colorful markers, gel pens. So many ways you could have embellished this. Uh, a little bit of Elmer's glue and sprinkle um, glitter on them. For these, I used um, just the wires that you get for making jewelry and just kind of made all kinds of fun little swirly things. For this one, I cut out that same string that I used on the outside of the card. Again, that's in the jewelry section too. And before I mounted it on the light green, I just flipped it over the edge and I just taped it. You could have glued it as well. Um, and I actually, the more I see these, I almost wish I would have had a double mat. I'm really liking that extra depth and volume. I glued these little guys on once they were dry and I cut them out. And for these dimensional ones, I stuck them behind it. And there is a glue dot behind each one of those as well. If you guys have any questions. I want to thank you again for joining me. Um, all these techniques also really work great. You could have done pumpkins for Halloween or Thanksgiving. Uh, this is really cool for Easter eggs or Valentine's Day. Uh, the techniques that I shared today 
uh, cross over into any holiday and almost any venue, uh, even weddings and fun things. So um, thank you so much for joining me. I really enjoy every time I get to spend time with y'all. Felicia. I oh, just make sure you, you so were much. finished before I cut everybody off. I didn't want to cut you off prematurely. So thank you, everyone. And as soon as we can get with General Pencil to try to get Kathy back, we will definitely try our best. So we hope you all have a great day and a wonderful week. Please join us for our next 12 days of Christmas, uh, 12 days of cart making and see you soon. Thank you.